This tutorial will go through one of the methods you can use for using the world space offsets. I will touch on how certain aspects of it work, how it's applied to the materials and to the actual geometry that you have in the scene. Now, if we look here, there's just a very simple plane in the scene with material applied to it. And if we open it up and go into the wireframe mode, just resize it there. Um, it's very, very simple, extremely simple. It's just a flat plane with, with no more than 20 polys on it. So not a lot of geometry, and depending on what you're doing, you might not want a whole lot. But for what we're going to be doing, which is uh, um, in one of my other, other tutorials I created, Fog, we're going to be using this for offsetting uh, the actual plane so it doesn't look as flat. It looks like it's dynamic. Uh, if we take a look at a different material, now we have a time multiplied by the vertice, which cancels out anything that's painted black and keeps the, the value at 1 for anything that's painted white. This is then added to itself, put into the uh, sign with a value of 2, and then multiply by 25 just to increase it. This, in return, plugs into the world space offset. Uh, also, uh, we need to change this to a translucent, otherwise it's not going to work properly, and, and I'll show you this later. So if you apply this material to the scene, you can see that the geometry is wavy. Now this, this geometry was actually tweaked before it was painted on, just to show you what it can be, but I'll go through the process for, uh, um, for bringing in the geometry itself. If we go into the mist material that I created earlier, you can see how the mist is actually kind of flowing as, uh, as the time goes on, because it is plugged into the time variable. Now, there are different ways to set this up, but for starters, let's just go and find our uh, static plane and bring that into the scene and move it up to a relative height. Um, has to be above ground since it will be waving, and if it goes into the ground, you, you will have some visual issues. Uh, if we go over and pick uh, material just to apply it, you can see it's pulsating up and down, but it's not perfectly vertical. It has kind of this oscillating uh, action in, in every direction in both the X, Y, and the Z. Uh, the way to get rid of this is to be painting out the actual vertice colors that you do or don't want. So in this example, I'm going to take the red, the green, and the blue, just make my brush a little bit bigger, and, and paint out what I have. If you have any trouble painting out your scene like I do right here, just because it's so large and you can't see the vertices, uh, just make your geometry smaller, go in, paint it out to the, the values that you need, and then just plop it back up. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger so we can see what we're working with. Um, <clears throat> so if I turn off the red and the green values and I start painting the blue, you can see that it starts waving. Uh, now if if you paint it up to 100%, if your strength is that high and um, your point colors are 100% high, it'll just start going up and down. There won't be any X or Y um, values, only a Z value. Likewise, if I paint that uh, back down to, to a value of 0 and I paint green up, you, you can see that it's moving along the Y axis, the, the green arrow. And likewise, if I were to paint that back down, so it's a value of 0, go to red, and start painting that out, it goes along the, the x-axis, the, the red indicator. So I'll just paint that back down to 0, and then I'll turn my value down, turn on my blue, turn off the red, and I'll just start painting with, with a very low value. Now, these values are going to be added to the time. They're not multiplied, so they won't actually um, change the speed. Simply, all, all they're going to do is change the time that it goes up or down. So this will be a looping animation based on your vertices. Um, and I should point out that the vertices, uh, do, vertice colors do have a value of 255, but when you bring them into the general editor, they go from 0 to 1. So when you multiply something by a vertice color, you're not going to multiply a white, um, which would be a, a 255 value. It will actually be uh, a value of 1. So 
<clears throat> if I just bring the material back on, you can see that it's it's the fog that we had before. Now if we compare materials, this one is just like the fog, but it's it's solid. And when you move it, it doesn't actually deform. It's based on the time, uh, not necessarily the, the position of the world. This other material, however, has a world uh, object world position offset. Uh, you want to multi uh, desaturate that and multiply it by 0 0.01 just because it's going to be a large value and multiply that by the vertice colors. From then on it's set up just like the other shaders has been set up before. So as you can see here as I move this it has this very slow um, slow wave effect to it, but when I move it in certain directions, the positive or the negative, it actually speeds up or slows down the, the different speeds. So if I duplicate this out and take the, the original shader, select both of them and move them. You can see that the original one, which doesn't have any world's, uh, world position uh, variables applied to it, it doesn't actually animate when you move it. Now what this is good for is if you want to actually paint out in max uh, certain grass shaders, so you can have grass, grass waving. Once you offset that, the grass actually has a different uh, waving pattern, so it's not going to match exactly, and you're not going to get this, this ghosting. Now if I go into wireframe, uh, you can see the geometry is solid, but the waves are offset. Now this is important to note because if I grab this other material, just solid material, plop it on, you can see that it's flat. This other material that I have where it's not set to translucency, everything's set up the same as before, it's the exact same shader, but the translucency is actually opaque. Now when I apply to it, the black area represents the original plane that the geometry is. We're actually offsetting the texture in relation to that. Because of this, you have to make something either additive or translucent. You cannot keep it just, just opaque. So you can see the differences here. If I bring the mist back in, scale it up, bring it down to a, to a reasonable level. And there you go, you have your, your waving mist. It's very cheap because it, the mist actually is translucent. Um, it's not casting any shadows, just go into the properties of the geometry and choose it not to, to cast shadow, then you're not going to have any issues with that. It'll just be a translucent, non-shadow casting material that waves. So it, it's just one way to bring your, your scene a little bit more to life and be less flat. Hope you enjoy.